Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jessica McDonald. I am a knitting pattern designer and this is my knitting podcast. If you are a usual viewer, you might have noticed that I've been gone for a while. It's been about a month since my last um, recording, I think. Uh, yeah, we were really sick. We were very, very sick right after Christmas. So about three weeks of, well, not three weeks of this year, but a week of last year and two weeks of this year were just completely down the toilet. So it, even though it's been a month, I don't have a lot of new stuff to show you because I just didn't have time to knit. We all had a really, really bad cold. It was a really bad cold. It wasn't anything special like COVID or flu. It was just a nasty cold bug and the kids had a stomach bug on top of that. So it was not fun for us. Anyway. I'll get into everything I have to show you today. I have two whips, a pair of socks, a sweater. I have a subscription box that I uh, got a year's worth of subscription to, to show off to you. And um, yeah, so I have some cool stuff to show you. Today is Saturday, January 21st. I always have to check to see what the date is because I never remember, you know. I don't need to know what days are. I just stay at home. It is a very still and foggy day. We have some serious inversion outside. It's probably around zero or just above zero degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not the kind of day you want to spend a lot of time outside on, but everything is just coated in hoarfrost, like serious, like half an inch thick hoarfrost on every tree, every fence, everything is just covered in hoarfrost. So it's really pretty, even though it's really, really cold. So anyway, first things first, I have a new pattern release on Monday, which is two days from now. It is this one that I am wearing. It's called My Fletching. It's knit in Barrett Wool Co. Woolens, which is a sport weight yarn. The colors are Thimble for the main color and old fashioned for the contrast color. It's got this very simple color work yoke. Very, very simple motifs. This would be a really good one for a new color work knitter or somebody who doesn't have a lot of practice with color work who wants to knit themselves a color work sweater or if you have more experience, it's really, really relaxing. I really enjoyed knitting it. So it's coming out on Monday. So I'm gonna to try to upload this overnight. So if you're watching this tomorrow on the 22nd, sign up for my newsletter. If you're watching it after that, I'll put a link to the pattern in the description box down below this video so you can go get this sweater. If you sign up for my newsletter, then you will get an exclusive 20% off discount on the pattern. Um, there's also a baby slash children's version of this pattern and I'm going to include a discount on that pattern as well just for my newsletter subscribers. So sign up for that. The link is in the description box below. Um, also, if you want to shop my patterns, my website, my Ravelry designer store and all that is in the description box below. So, uh, now let's get into actual things that I have to show you. I think I'm going to start with the socks because they match the sweater. Oops. After I knit this sweater that I'm wearing, my fletching, I had a fair bit of yarn left over and I couldn't quite decide what I wanted to make out of it. I thought about hat and mittens and stuff, but I already have hats and mittens and stuff. But, and I've been really wanting to knit myself some socks. So I thought, why don't I just make it into socks? So I did. As you can see, I've swapped the colors. I had a little more of the old fashioned left over, so I decided to use that as the main color because I wanted to make them both the same. I didn't want to have to like swap colors and do one sock in this color scheme and another sock in the opposite color scheme. So I did it like this. It's got the same color work. I don't know if it focuses nicely on there. I've got the same color work on the sock as is on the sweater. This is knit on a much tighter gauge because it's socks. And even though I'm not a very experienced sock knitter, my understanding is that you need to knit socks at a very tight gauge so that they last longer. So these are on size two needles. Let me check. Yeah, these are on size two needles. Um, 
Whereas the sweater, the main parts of the sweater is worked on a US size five needle. So it's a, a significantly different gauge just to make it tighter because socks are supposed to be tighter. So there it is. It's knit cuff down. It has a heel flap and gusset. And then just a normal sock toe. It was really fun learning all of the sock things, like the math of a sock, like how many stitches go in your gusset, how many rows do you work, how do you work the heel turn. Like there's different variations of your heel, like do you want it a V heel or a square heel or a round heel, and I learned all those things while I was writing this pattern, so I had a lot of fun you know, learning something new and trying out something different. Like for me, when I write a sweater pattern, it's pretty easy now. I have enough experience designing sweaters that I know all of the rules and all of the general math and I have my, all my sizing charts figured out. And so it's just making the stitch pattern work with all of those rules basically. But this was a whole new thing, a whole new construction, a whole new concept, a whole new everything that I needed to learn. So that was a lot of fun for me to learn something new and to write a sock pattern. So there it is. This one hasn't been blocked. Um, I just haven't done it yet. I also don't have any sock blockers, so I need to probably look for a pair of sock blockers. I don't know if I will, or if I'll just try to make do without it. But they do look really nice on sock blockers, so I might just do that. Um, so here's the first one. This is written in six sizes. This pattern is written in six sizes. This is the fifth size. I am a tall person, so I need larger things. So this is the fifth size, there's one size larger, and then it starts at toddler size. I do have the pattern right here. I don't always remember all of the details because I have a lot of things going on at once. And Oh, I didn't put the sizing in here. <laughs> Apparently I need to finish the pattern. Um, yeah, I have a lot of things going on. A lot of different patterns in the air and in process and a lot of things going on so I don't always remember exactly exactly what the sizes are but this is starts um, I think toddler size the kids sizes only have one repeat of this color work so that you don't end up with a ridiculously long leg on a little tiny person and then the adult sizes so the three smallest sizes have one repeat of the color work the three largest sizes have two repeats of the color work there's the first sock. Here's the second one. My yarn is all a mess. Here's the second one. So I'm just in the first band of the color work on the second one over here so you can see it. I cast this on right away because I didn't want to fall victim to second sock syndrome because um, I have actually two mismatched single socks that I've knit for myself and I never got around to knitting the second pair so I didn't want to fall victim to second sock syndrome with my own design so I just cast it on right away so that I wouldn't hopefully wouldn't end up with only one sock so I enjoyed it very much it was fun to knit something small I started this shortly after Christmas um, and have already finished one sock I did have trouble with um, the small circumference on the tight gauge, the way I hold my needles, they rest on my ring finger here. And as I was knitting, my ring finger would get sore, like just from all the pressure and motion against it from the needle. That's like, like when I hold my needle, it like presses right there. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. It presses right here against my finger. And so if I knit on the sock for too long, it would make my finger sore, but I just wrapped a band-aid around that spot and it was fine. But that was the only downside I encountered with knitting my first sock design. So there it is. They're gonna be the fletching socks. I'm not going to get too creative and come up with an entirely new name. So I think I'll release this pattern in April. I have to finish writing the pattern, send it to a tech editor, all that jazz. So it'll be a little while before the pattern actually comes out, but there's one. Here's number two. So I'm having a little fun with socks. It's been very enjoyable to knit. And this is also um, Barrett Woolco Woolens. Same yarn as with my 
sweater. I really love the yarn tag for this, the little cabin. I believe Susan um, drew this herself. It's just adorable, this little cabin. I'm a sucker for cabins. Does it focus? It's not focus. Hang on. There. Isn't that adorable? I love it. Okay. So those are the socks. And now let's talk about a sweater. You saw this one started last time, if you watched the last episode. And here it is. I was hoping it would be finished by the time today re uh, rolled around, but like I said, I didn't have a lot of time to knit over the last month, so it's not quite done yet. So I just need to knit the cuff of the first sleeve and the whole second sleeve. Uh, this afternoon, I really don't have anything I need to do, so I thought that I would just sit on the couch and watch videos about sheep and maybe some knitting podcasts and try to completely finish this sweater because there's nothing else I have to do. Literally nothing. The house is already clean. The laundry is folded. I can just sit and knit for the rest of the day. I'll move this. So this is knit in unspun yarn, specifically Manchalopi from Wool Dreamers. I don't know the colors off of the top of my head, but it's a natural dark brown color and a natural, it's not white. It's like the, the next darker one than white, so it's a slight oatmeal-y color. Um, if you don't want to use or, uh, unspun yarn, you can just use worsted weight yarn. Here it is. The test knit is going on this one, and the test knitters, some are done, some were much faster than me. Um, the test knitters used a variety of yarns. Some used unspun, but a lot of people just used a regularly spun worsted weight yarn, and it looks fantastic. It turns out amazing, and yeah. So if you don't want to use unspun, you don't have to, but I'm really enjoying the process, and the fabric is turning out really, really lightweight and warm. Like when I lay it on my lap while I'm knitting, it's so warm. So it's going to be really nice to wear on days like today. It's called Winter Woods, and the pattern will be out on February the 6th. If you want to hear more about it, you can watch my previous podcast episode where I talk all about it. I don't want to bore you to tears if you've already heard all about it, but yeah, here it is. Here's the progress. So just a sleeve cuff and a sleeve. Knitting with unspun yarn is fun, but I do not recommend trying to do it in the car. Um, I did a few times and it, like, it just breaks so easily when you're sitting in the car knitting. It's just, you can spit splice it together, which always makes me feel a bit grubby, but I don't want to, I don't want to constantly be having to splice my yarn together. I'd like to just knit, you know, in the car. So it's not really good for car knitting, the unspun yarn. It's also not really good for knitting while children are jumping on you. So I put a poll on Instagram asking, do you want me to leave the collar like it is? So it's three inches long, three inches of ribbing. So it forms like a little mock neck collar. And I asked if people wanted it left as a mock neck or fold it down. Because my plan is to fold it down and sew it down. And I still plan to do that. And the results were evenly split between having a mock neck and having a folded collar. So I'm including instructions in the pattern for, here it is, this will be what it looks like when it's folded, for mock neck versus folded, which since you're going to be sewing down the collar at the end, if you want to have a mock neck, you just leave it alone. If you want it folded down, you just fold it down and sew it in place. So I thought I'd try to take pictures both ways so people can see how it looks both ways and then they can make up their mind at that point if they want it folded or left as a little mock neck. So, oh, I have the other color. I forgot all about it. I was thinking it was far away, but you can see that it's not, it's not perfectly white. It's got a little bit of the brown because these are just natural colors of the fiber. It's got a little bit of the brown, um, 
wool mixed into the white so it's just kind of a really 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 light oatmeal color I thought it would look good as um, slightly more muted and a softer contrast if I'd gone for stark white it would have been a sharper contrast but I kind of like the idea of toning down the contrast a little bit for a little bit of a softer look to it and I really like it so ah! Is February 6th will be the day this one comes out. If you want to uh, make sure you don't miss it, sign up for my newsletter at the link below. Oh, I have to put it away without breaking my yarn. I can't tell if sometimes I look like uh, just like a white sheet from the glare from the light or if I'm the lighting is okay. So hopefully it's been okay. You may have heard of Ottoman Indigo Fibers. Um, I'm friends with her on Instagram. I followed her for a really long time and she started something at the end of last year which is called the Fiber Collective. You can see her little stamp there. And she has subscription boxes um, with yarn and some other little goodies inside. So she has a farm yarn box, a sock yarn box, and a hand spun yarn box. I decided to get the farm yarn box because it just sounded really cool to try a bunch of different farm yarns and maybe a bunch of different uncommon breeds perhaps and just try a bunch of new interesting yarns. Um, I don't think you can get the farm yarn box anymore. I think she's sold out all of her farm yarn boxes for the year. I'm not sure, you'll have to check her website, but I think you can still get the hand spun, not the hand spun, hand dyed subscription box, as well as the sock yarn subscription box. Um, this is the first time I've ever done a subscription box thing. So I got the whole year and I'm really excited about it because it's just like a present to myself every so often. I think it's gonna be really fun and really cool. So this is the first box that came at the beginning of the month and uh, yeah she has so she has what's inside and it tells you what's inside the box and then you have a little QR code at the bottom where she has some extras for you that are available online and then the box includes a skein of yarn and some other little extras so I thought I would tell you all about what's in here so a little unboxing because this is kind of fun. <laughs> so when I ordered this subscription box, I thought that I would make all of these yarns into socks because I really want to knit myself a whole bunch of socks and I would get all of these single skeins of yarn that probably wouldn't match super well with the plans that I have for sweaters or other yarns that I have for sweaters. So I thought I'll just make them all into socks. But this yarn is probably a little too nice for socks. So this yarn is from Ridgedale Farms. Uh, da -da. You can find her on Etsy, Ridgedale Farms. It's a DK weight, 250 yards. It does not say on the tags what this specific skein is, but I looked her up on Etsy and she sells Columbia Rambouillet yarn. So I believe this is Columbia Rambouillet yarn. And I think that it's her sheep that are crossbred Columbia and Rambouillet. I don't think it's Columbia yarn and Rambouillet yarn mix or fiber mixed together to make this yarn. I think it's probably the sheep that are just crossbred from those two breeds. It is really soft. It is really squishy. It will be really fantastic for something that's texture or cable. Um, I think that the stitch definition on this would be fantastic. Um, but I, since it's so nice and soft, I don't know that it would work very well for socks, which was my original plan. So I may have to just revisit my plans and make something else. I can make some really nice mittens or a really nice hat out of it. Like it's only one skein, so I can't get too excited and make something too big unless I want to buy more yarn. And going into this, I didn't want to, you know, get a skein and then go to buy a whole sweater quantity of that yarn. I just wanted to get a skein and try it and have fun with it and kind of use it as a 
someone to play with instead of like something to so since I design knitting patterns, I really enjoy knitting. It's a really big passion of mine, but since I design knitting patterns, there is now a huge element of work to my knitting. And I thought that it would be a lot of fun just to have this be just for play, you know? Just try some new things and experiment and stuff like that. But this is a really nice yarn. And it may not make very good socks because it is so soft and yeah. It is a really creamy color, uh, very, very creamy. It's, I would not say it's white. I would say it's cream. It's not quite yellow, but it's very creamy. <laughs> very, very creamy. So there's the yarn. It's so squishy, it's so squishy. Like it's, it's such a nice yarn. Okay, there's the yarn. And I'll show you the little extras. There from Birch and Spider, there's some little um, it. There's some little tags to put on your hand knits that say handmade. And they come with a little screw so you can fold them over and attach them. A little shapey sticker. Um, Horse Feather Fiber Arts is someone I followed on Instagram for a long time and I've really admired what she makes but have never had an excuse to buy anything from her so this is fun to receive something from her it's a little progress keeper let me put it closer and zoom in on it, or focus on it yep there it's like a little um flower progress keeper and then some stitch markers from autumn and indigo focus on those too. Oop, doo, doo, doo. There's this fancy one that you can use at the beginning of the round and then these ones are just the pentagons. Five sided. Is that five sides? No, oh, there's six sides. Hexagons. Little stitch markers. And that is everything in the box. I need to scan the QR code and see what my extras online are. I haven't done that yet. This came while we were incredibly super duper sick and so I just kind of quickly opened it so I could squeal over everything that was inside and then set it aside. So this is just the second time that I'm looking at it. I'm looking forward to this. It's a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. Stuck to the Keeping it in here with it closed so that the kids don't take all of my little stitch markers and run off with them. So that is everything I have to show you today. Actually this box you can see in the background over here is full of new yarn that I'm going to show you next time. But I have a really fun new collaboration for next fall. Something, of, something I'm really really excited about. So um, that's arrived. I've also got some other yarn from Bare Naked Wools on the way. This here in this box is from Biche et Bouche. And then I've got some yarn from Bare Naked Wools on the way. I'm working on figuring out my collaborations for next fall and all of my designs for next fall. Because this, don't want to rip my yarn apart. This Winter Woods sweater will be my last um, sweater release for this winter. Um, I've got some yarn coming for a summery design. So I'll have something for you late spring, early summer. That's a sweater. But then I'm not going to have any sweaters to, re well, let me stop. I still have Silver Birch and Large from my Forest Birch book to release as individual patterns as well. But aside from that, the rest of my patterns all the way through until probably late August this year are going to be smaller things like socks and shawls and things like that. So I'm working on my uh, design plans and my release plan for next fall already and figuring out the collaborations I want to do and the designs I want to do. So I'm in a really big creative, uh, creative binge perhaps right now 
figuring out everything I'm gonna make over the next few months and figuring out the perfect yarns and reaching out to people and saying, hey, do you wanna do a collaboration with me? Um, it was just, this creative part of the job is something that I really, really enjoy. It's a lot of fun for me to come up with the new designs and find all the perfect yarns and all of that part. It's really enjoyable. It's really fun. I'm really enjoying it. So I have a lot of very exciting plans for next fall. Anyway, yeah. I think that's all that I need to tell you for today. I'm going to go and probably make lunch at this point and then I'm going to sit and knit for the rest of the day on that beautiful thing over there. And it's going to be a wonderful afternoon. Please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my new videos. I don't just do knitting podcasts, I also do a lot of tutorials. Uh, my tutorials are my most watched videos, so <laughs> I'll be putting out lots more tutorials. I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to, the next big tutorial video that I'm doing is how to knit a top down sweater for someone who doesn't know how to knit a top down sweater. So that somebody who's never knit a sweater before can watch that video and learn how to make a top down sweater. So if that's you, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. And until next time, I hope you guys have a lovely day or afternoon wherever you are in the world, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.